I did a tutorial a month or two back about multi-band compression for metal guitars on the Axe FX3, and since then, we've actually had a significant update to the multi-band compressor, which essentially lets us hone in on taming those super tight chugs uh, the way we want them. So this was a firmware improvement that I think a lot of people had requested. I put a request in in the forum and pretty quickly they got onto it. So that's one thing that I really, really love about Fractal is that they actually listen to their customers and their users, which is pretty awesome. So uh, anyway, let's get straight into it because I want to revisit this and show you guys how you can fine tune those settings from the first video. So what we've got here is the Bogner Überschall model and then I'm using an impulse of my 412. Uh, it sounds like this so far. This is my SDR LJ1 on the bridge pickup. Mm -hmm. Sounds like... So pretty mega chunky guitar sound there. Um, and I'm gonna totally ruin that guitar sound for you guys in a second because whenever you're playing palm mutes, as I said in the last video, uh, you get this kind of build up of low end content somewhere between like, you know, 80 or 90 hertz and maybe about 300 hertz. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play a loop and then we're gonna use a parametric EQ block to sort of diagnose where those frequencies are. Then when we find those frequencies, we're gonna use a multi-band compressor to tame them. So uh, I like doing this in the looper. You can see we've already got a loop in there, but uh, if you use this record threshold control, uh, I'd set it to about here, hit record, and then it's only gonna start recording when I start playing. So play something with lots of palm mutes. <laughs> What we're going to then do is turn on a parametric EQ block. I'm going to use, so we're going to turn that on, common mistake that I make. Uh, we're going to turn the Q right up, and what I'm going to do is set the gain to 12 dB. So essentially this is going to amplify in a very, very, very strict frequency band, uh, whatever sort of frequency we want. I'm going to use this frequency control to sweep it along. So let's just have a listen to that loop. This is not going to be the most interesting thing that you hear today, but you'll be able to hear where those palm mutes really, really get b -b 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 kind of flubby, and this parametric EQ will give us an idea of what frequency band that's doing it in. So let's play the loop and do that. if you were listening to that really loud because you can hear somewhere about 130 hertz there is this huge low resonant frequency buildup um, and somewhere around 190 200 hertz so what we're going to do with the multi-band compressor now so i'll turn this eq block off and i will load up a multi-band compressor so there's a few new parameters in there <clears throat> namely we can set the frequency range to either be high or low so uh, previously it could only go down i think on this high mode to a thousand hertz they're the old settings but if we set it to low we can go as low as 100 hertz. So those palm mutes were living somewhere in that like, you know, 100 to 300 hertz range. So the Andy Sneep settings, I think are like 90 to 350, but why don't we go 300 for this video and we'll go, let's go 100, why not? Because what we can further do there is tailor the slope of the filters on the multiband compressor. Let's set it to 24 decibels per octave. So that's quite a steep slope for the crossover which is awesome. What we're then gonna do is go through and set all of these levels to zero in each band. And then the threshold for each of these, I'm gonna to set to zero dB and we're gonna tweak from there. So I believe the classic like Andy Sneep settings are with the attack around 12 milliseconds or something and the release about 25. So let's set them about there, something like that and I'll set the ratio to three. So the idea is gonna be this. When I play my guitar normally in open, you know, if you've watched the other video, we don't want the multi-band compressor to attack it. We want this kind of stuff to just stay dynamic and open, right? <laughs> We only want the multiband compressor to suck down these kind of frequencies. So what I'm gonna do is, again, I will play that loop and then I'm just gonna adjust the threshold very gradually until I can see the multiband compressor kind of suck down those frequencies. So let's do that loop again 
and we'll toy with the threshold. <laughs> So for this particular patch uh, around minus 24, let's just have a play and make sure that it's not pulling down when I'm playing open. So the threshold, I might bring it up just a little bit because it is pulling down when I'm playing open. That's better, and then palm mutes. So again, you can kind of fine tune that. And we can also change the frequency. You know, we might want to take the crossover a little bit lower. And I mean, we could take it lower here and have a listen to what it does. Or we could take it higher and see if we prefer it there. So between 90 and 300, you know, the middle of those two frequencies would be somewhere around that 190, 200 kind of frequency band where it was getting really, really uh, blown out. So let's have a listen now with the compressor off. And I said I was going to ruin that original sound for you because now you'll hear all that uh, sort of low and low mid buildup and then we'll squash it with the compressor. By the way, if you want to bypass blocks, just press spacebar. Uh, somebody asked me about that earlier. So yeah, I'm just pressing spacebar and it works. Let's have a listen. And I would fine tune that a little bit more from there, but hopefully that gives you an idea. Again, there's sort of like no magic preset to make this happen. It all depends on the, uh, the overall amount of level coming out of your amp in your cab. So you'll have to set the threshold uh, appropriately. And then you can play around with the crossover frequencies there and really dial it in the way that you like it. And uh, I use this on my main patch for playing live. Not that I've used it live yet, but I'm intending to use it live. So this is a blend between the Ubershal and the Atomica. It's essentially my recording preset that I have pimped out uh, with all the stuff that I would need to play live. And you can see here, I've got the multiband comp uh, with kind of similar settings, uh, 350 and 92 for the crossovers. And then because I'm using two amps, I've changed the threshold a little bit. This is what it sounds like. <laughs> I love the way that sounds. Again, you know, a lot of the bass guitar lives in those kind of frequencies, so pulling it out in a band mix isn't gonna have, well, it's actually gonna sort of clean things up, which is what you want. So that's pretty cool. That is how we can use the multiband compressor in the Axe FX3. Now that it's had a pretty significant update, you can get those uh, Andy Sneap metal guitar settings happening. Uh, I guess he's sort of famous for using it with like the Waves C4 or multiband or whatever plugin it is. Um, I was watching, uh, Ola England's Q&A this week as well, and he mentioned he uses the Fab Filter multiband comp on like everything he does, which makes a lot of sense because you can hear it kind of gives you that, I mean, my guitar sound isn't anything like his, but uh, he is sort of famous for that really super tight, uh, chuggy thing that's going on, and uh, multiband compression makes a lot of sense in that setting. So it's built into the Axe FX3, we can change the crossovers, we can change the thresholds, and uh, another thing that you can do with it as well is use it to actually push the low end. So with this level control here, uh, say I set the ratio to like two, something pretty subtle, just one last thing, <laughs> uh, and say we're playing. <laughs> So 
So what I'm doing there is it's compressing it, but then I'm also like adding, I'm using makeup gain on the level. To kind of push the lows a little bit more, of course, if you don't want to do that, if you don't want any compression, you can just push the lows on their own by setting the threshold to zero. is an interesting effect. I think somebody mentioned it might have been like the guitar player from Architects or one of those kind of bands um, who uses multi-band compression in this way and of course it's great on bass guitar as well if you're playing bass with your fingers you know you kind of get those click artifacts in there you can use the multi-band compressor to kill the click and like obviously you would use the high band there and probably a much higher uh, crossover frequency but it works great there. Uh, works really nice for clean sounds as well, which is great. So multi-band compression is awesome. It's really great for metal guitars, and that's how you use it in the Axe FX3. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. I'll see you soon.